Focke-Wulf 198-3 entered service in March 1942. Its combination of firepower, speed, and agility made it a formidable adversary. Although the FW-190 had many strengths, it was prone to sudden and unexpected stalls during extreme combat maneuvers. The following characteristics were crucial for pilots to understand in order to effectively operate this iconic World War II fighter aircraft in a combat environment. Armament. Standard armament of the FW-198-3 included two 7.92mm MG-17 machine guns mounted in the cowl and two MG-15120mm cannons mounted in the wing roots. The MG-15-1 fired high-explosive incendiary rounds and high-capacity, high-explosive rounds called mine shells. The sensitive fuses of the high-capacity, high-explosive mine shells were triggered by contact with an aircraft's aluminium skin, and the timing of detonation was set to cause maximum damage to airframe structural integrity. Each high-capacity, high-explosive mine shell carried one-third the explosive charge of a World War II hand grenade, and only 20 to 25 hits were needed to bring down a heavy bomber. Sub-variants of the FW-198-3 could have two additional 20mm MGFF cannons mounted mid-wing. The A-3 could also be modified to carry up to 500 kilograms in rockets or general-purpose bombs. Engine. The hallmark of the FW-198-3 was the 41.8-liter. 14-cylinder, air-cooled BMW 801 D2 double-row radial engine. The D2 series engine ran on 100-octane C2-C3 fuel, with later variants fitted with methanol water injection systems. The BMW 801 D could produce up to 1,700 horsepower with emergency power at 1.42 ATA for up to three minutes. The gear-driven single-stage two-speed supercharger was optimized for low and medium-level performance. The cowling of the FW-190 was ingeniously designed with an inlet fan to provide positive pressure in the cowl for maximum cooling whilst minimizing drag. The cowl also housed a unique ring-shaped armored oil cooling radiator in its leading edge and served as a cool air inlet for the supercharger. Moving these features from the airframe to the cowl further reduced drag. Interestingly, technical publications have reported the overall drag for an A-Series FW-190 was lower than a Spitfire Mark 9. Engine Management The FW-190's BMW 801 had a comprehensive engine control system that allowed the pilot to control power output just by adjusting the throttle lever. In response to throttle input, a mechanical hydraulic command unit automatically optimized fuel mixture, propeller pitch, ignition timing, and manifold pressure. This precursor to today's digital engine control unit significantly decreased workload and allowed the pilot to focus on other important combat-related tasks. No Allied planes had similarly comprehensive engine control units. FW-198-3 could reach 347 miles per hour, 560 kilometers per hour at sea level and 410 miles per hour, 662 kilometers per hour at 20,000 feet, 6,400 meters. Compared to the Spitfire V, the top speed of the FW-198-3 was 10% faster at all altitudes. FW-198-3 was faster than a Spitfire in a dive, especially during the initial phase. The maximum dive speed limit was rated as 528 miles per hour, 850 kilometers per hour, with a Mach limit of around 0.79. Dive speeds as high as 567 miles per hour, 912 kilometers per hour, have been reported. 
At high dive speeds, expect extremely slow response to the elevator until altitudes below 5,000 feet, 1,500 meters, are reached. W198-3's climb rate was an outstanding 3,149 feet per minute, 16.0 meters per second, at sea level, which was 20% greater than a contemporary Spitfire V. At 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters, the Spitfire V and FW198-3 had equivalent climb rates of 2,560 feet per minute, 13 meters per second. By 20,000 feet, 6,000 meters, the Spitfire V's climb rate was 20% higher than the FW-198-3. Maneuverability. The FW-190 had a robust airframe and well-balanced control surfaces. At low altitudes, the FW-198-3 outperformed his main adversary, the Spitfire V. The A-3 had excellent roll rates, better top speed, outstanding climb, and good dive characteristics. It even matched the Spitfire V on maximum performance turn rates. However, at high altitudes, the short wings of the FW-190 limited maneuverability in its single-stage supercharger was not optimized for high altitude performance. The pilot should be cautioned that when the wing's angle of attack increases during extreme maneuvering, there is almost no pre-stall buffeting. If flight is not corrected after minor buffeting is felt, stall will occur suddenly. Closing, 13,291 FW 190A series fighters were produced during the Second World War. Overall, the FW 190A3 was a well balanced fighter aircraft with excellent low altitude performance. Its combination of speed, agility, and firepower gave it the potential to beat any Allied fighter it encountered. Skilled pilots who knew their airplane's performance envelope were always more formidable adversaries.